This episode, I get to talk about a helicopter that even today looks futuristic, but unfortunately, it ticks all the boxes of a modern stealth aircraft program. Stealthy radar cross-section, billions of dollars over budget, and years behind schedule. To start, I will talk about the program that spawned the Comanche and some of the truly bonkers proposals that were submitted. In the 1980s, the US Army had a look at their current list of helicopters and came to the conclusion that they were incredibly vulnerable to modern air defense systems, especially the highly dangerous scout reconnaissance mission sets. A new program was created, the Light Helicopter Experimental Program, or LHX. There was a LHXU, or utility program, that was looking to replace the aging Huey, and the LHX SCAT, or Scout and Attack, which was looking to replace the OH-6 Cayuse, the OH-58 Kiowa, the AH-1 Cobra, and the UH-1M Huey gunship. The study that led to the LHX program also concluded that there was a lack of original thinking in US Army aircraft procurement, and so manufacturers were encouraged to use bizarre and unconventional approaches when designing their aircraft. Manufacturers were encouraged to incorporate stealth, advanced materials, and advanced avionics into their design. It was also encouraged to make the helicopter extremely fast, with a top speed of 345 miles per hour, or 555 kilometers an hour. It should be noted that even today, the fastest helicopters rarely go above 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers an hour. How do you reach these truly astronomical speeds? Well, you try some exotic design concepts, like Bell and Sikorsky's converter planes. Bell had been playing around with the idea of tilt rotors since the 50s, and the technology finally reached maturity in the late 70s with the Bell XV-15, Bell took their learnings from this program and applied it to the BAT, or Bell Advanced Tilt Rotor, which was a small tilt rotor design that weighed 3.5 tons with a maximum speed of 350 miles per hour and armament options that included four stingers, four Hellfire missiles, or two 70 mm hydro rocket pods. I mean, just look at how tiny this thing is. I also love the concept art. I love this one the most, it's just a beautiful landscape. Sikorsky also experimented with tilt rotor designs, but intimidated by the technological risks involved in tilt rotors, moved towards a more conventional solution. They went to a coaxial design like the Kamov Ka-50 slash Ka-52 gunship. It proved to be more stable and maneuverable than a tilt rotor design, but was significantly slower. Despite ultimately not winning the contract, you can still see the roots of this design in the Sikorsky S-97 radar. Hughes, off the back of winning the Advanced Attack Helicopter program, felt that they were strong contenders and submitted a pretty unique and bold design. The design featured no tail rotor, instead using a fan in the tail to counter the torque of the main rotor. The fuselage was a wasp-like pod with two swept wings and an extremely pointy nose. It was extremely well armed and fast, capable of reaching an estimated speed of 342 miles per hour. Boeing rejected the notion of high speed and went for a stealthy approach to increase survivability. One truly incredible feature of the design was to get rid of conventional transparent windows and instead use sensors to create an artificial view of the world for the pilot. Transparent windows at the time created problems for stealthy designs, and at the time there were concerns about potential laser dazzling weapons. Ultimately, the stealthy approach would work for Boeing, as the US Army agreed that it would increase survivability more than high speed, effectively killing all tilt rotor designs. LHX dropped the utility requirement in 1988, and in 1991 the Sikorsky-Boeing collaboration had been selected as the winner of the SCAT program. The aircraft was the RAH-66 Comanche. The Comanche was a futuristic design that has a stealthy cross-section which gives it a rather iconic appearance. It featured an internal weapons bay that could carry up to six Hellfire anti-tank missiles. It could also carry tow missiles, Stinger air-to-air -air missiles, and conventional hydro rocket pods. Its chin-mounted, triple-barreled 20mm Gatling gun could even be retracted inwards. It also featured retractable landing gear to further enhance its stealthiness. 
In a non-stealth configuration, small stub wings could be fitted, doubling the weapon's payload. The Comanche was also fairly survivable, being ballistically tolerant to 23mm gunfire. It also featured composite rotor blades for both the main rotor and tail rotor, with the tail rotor being able to withstand 12.7mm rounds. Its flight control systems were also triple redundant, with the cockpit having positive air pressure to protect the crew against chemical and biological weapons. The Comanche was also relatively fast and manoeuvrable, being able to reach a speed of 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers an hour, and being able to turn 180 degrees in a hover in just 4.7 seconds. In terms of countermeasures, the non-radar reflective surfaces meant the Comanche had a radar cross-section 1 to 50th the size of the OH-58 Kiowa, allowing it to approach four times closer before it would be detected. To reduce the Comanche's heat signature, the exhaust was channeled to the tail and dumped into the tail fan. The use of infrared dampening paint also reduced the helicopter's heat signature to a quarter of normal. The audio signature was also much lower than most militarized helicopters at the time, thanks to its all composite five blade main rotor and the fan in fin canted tail rotor. To spot enemies, the Comanche would use a long range infrared sensor. It could even be mounted with a millimeter wave longbow radar on the top of the rotor, allowing the helicopter to peek over hills and spot enemies. In early 1996, the Comanche finally took flight, with the second prototype flying three years later. But the Comanche had issues with buggy software, unreliable sensors, radar absorbent paint that would erode in the rain, and it turned out to be several hundred pounds overweight. There were efforts to improve performance of the engines and to cut down weight of the helicopter. All the while, the Army's requirements for the helicopter kept getting higher and higher, with the Army wanting the Little Scout helicopter to make trans-oceanic ferry flights. In 2004, the program was cancelled. The Comanche had made many bureaucratic foes given its high cost overruns and delays. The Army's reasoning for this cancellation was due to the evolving anti-air threat posed by world powers like Russia and China and that it would take too much time to redesign aspects of the craft to make it more fit for combat. Instead, the army chose to upgrade their existing fleet and to invest in UAV programs. The Comanche was highly ambitious, but as is the problem with incorporating so many new technologies into one program, developing, debugging and integrating became extremely costly both in terms of money and in time. Had the US army pumped billions more into the program, could they have ironed out all the bugs? Probably, but ultimately, would it have been worth it? Probably not. Even today, stealth helicopters are niche. They fit a very specific role, mainly special forces deployment like the Osama bin Laden raid. It certainly could have been useful, but ultimately, in the wars America was fighting at the time, e.g. Iraq and Afghanistan, a majority of the threats were short-range anti-air guns and heat-seeking missiles. It simply wasn't worth the cost. Ultimately, the Comanche program cost $7 billion, or close to $10 billion today. It would have cost 40% of the Army's yearly aviation budget, which simply wouldn't have been worth it for such a niche role. And in a bitter twist of fate, the helicopter the Comanche was designed to replace was still in operation till 2017, and was replaced with the Apache, but it proved to be a poor fit for the reconnaissance role. The legacy of the Comanche would live on. The technologies used would be seen in the Stealth Hawk, and its roots can be seen in the new Bell 360 Invictus, which is going for the new armed reconnaissance program. But I'll be honest, it doesn't look nearly as cool as the Comanche. This helicopter will always have a soft spot in my heart. I remember back when I was a kid, I had a mod that would let me fly the Comanche in Battlefield 2, and it was a blast. I always loved its futuristic look. But after doing research for this video, I've come to the conclusion that cancelling the program when the army did was ultimately a good decision, as they could have pumped billions more into the Comanche to iron out all the bugs, to be left with a helicopter that has features not needed in the type of warfare America was fighting at the time. Even today, with the Future Attack Reconnaissance Aircraft program, only one out of five programs has stealth capabilities. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.